Turn with me, real of you, to St. John chapter 10 and verse number 10. And the word of God reads as follows. The thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. This is part two of how to live an abundant life. And when we looked at an abundant life uh, last week, we saw that it included uh, serving God. Mark chapter 10, verse number 45. We saw that it included uh, giving your life, reaching out uh, to the Lord's. St. Luke chapter 19, verse number 10. And when we look at uh, Jesus we saw that uh, many people uh, followed him wherever he went. We saw Jesus, he was always doing good. He was always uh, healing people. He was uh, teaching uh, profound uh, lessons. He taught his disciples. And then after his life, death, burial, and resurrection on that day, we saw in Acts chapter 2 and verse number uh, 41, after the first time, that the good news of Jesus Christ was preached. In Acts 2.41 it says, At that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. And then when we looked at Acts chapter 2 and verse number 47, it says, And the Lord added to the church daily those who were being uh, saved. And now we're looking at each other. I'm looking at myself and uh, you're examining yourself, and yes, you, you love people, and you want the church uh, to grow. You want souls to come to Christ. You want them to obey the gospel. You want the saved to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The question is, and again, living the abundant life that God would have us to live, in which we continue to uh, spiritually grow and serve those that are outside of Christ and serve one another. The question is, how is that going to happen? How is it going to happen? Where our souls are continuously uh, saved and where the saved in Christ, they grow in that salvation. How is that going to happen? Well, what you and I have to do, we have to continue to look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 2. And when we look at Jesus, a very familiar scripture among many of us. Yet we want to look at it just a little bit in depth for a couple of minutes this morning. It's because, again, we're looking at Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, so that we may grow individually and collectively, that souls may continue to be saved, and that the saved may grow in their salvation. So when we look at Jesus at the tender young age of 12 years old, it says of Jesus in Luke chapter 2 and verse number 42, it says Jesus increased in four areas, if you will. Jesus continued to increase in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. Four areas where Jesus uh, continued to increase and realizing that Jesus, he was perfect at every age of his development. And also he was perfectly a balance, if you will. Now when we look within the nature of man, there are four parts. You have the mind, you have the body, you have the soul, the spirit, sometimes the same thing, depending on what context it is, and the heart. Within the nature of man, we have four parts. In those four parts, when we look at our wisdom, it has to do with the mind. When we look at stature, it has to do with uh, the body. When we look at God, it has to do with the soul and the spirit. When we look at man, it's about one's relationship with others, the heart. 
So again, looking at these four parts, what you and I want to realize is that for people to be a saved and for the saved to continue to grow, again, collectively as a body, Brother Jenkins has to look at himself first. It starts with the person in the mirror. And thus we want to continue to match ourselves up with Christ and we want to continue to follow in his footsteps. So it says Jesus, first of all, it says he increased. That word increase is defined as to go forward. It means to advance. It means to proceed. It means to progress. It means to uh, grow. So it lets us know that Jesus Christ, and we want to continue to do the same thing that he did, being disciples, followers, learners of Christ. We want to continue to grow in those four areas. We want to continue to go forward. We need to want to continue to advance, to proceed, to progress, to grow. So Jesus continued to increase, one, in wisdom. Now, one of the things I always uh, thought, I thought to myself, why did God, of the reasons, one of the reasons that God mentioned wisdom of first? Well, again, wisdom, again, it has to do with our minds. And if we'll recall Proverbs chapter 4 and verse number 23, it says, Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. And then when we look at uh, Proverbs chapter 23 and verse number 7, it lets us know, as a person thinks in their heart, so are they. So it starts in the heart. So uh, the question is, is what's continually going through your mind? What's continually, uh, are you just ingesting in your mind? So as we look at wisdom, notice what, the definition of wisdom is, wisdom is that word uh, Sophia, and of its definitions included is skill. It comes from a root word which describes wisdom as clear. So thus, when we're looking at wisdom, wisdom is clarity. For the Christian, it's God's. Uh, clarity. So wisdom is God's clarity, God's skill in handling the issues of life. And if you recall, Brother Jenkins asked you to pray for me for wisdom because I need wisdom. See, as you continue to grow in getting God's wisdom, you're getting God's clarity and it will begin to grow in being clear on how you should handle every issue of your life. And wisdom is going to come from uh, God's word. So you want God's clarity. You want it to be clear to you from God's perspective on how to handle the issues of life. Now, how is God's wisdom, God's clarity received? One well, when we look at James chapter 1 and verse number 5, it says, if any of you lacks wisdom, now who is that? That's Brother Jenkins, that's everybody, everybody can use more wisdom. Let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally, and without reproach, it will be uh, given to him. So we want to continue to grow in asking God for Wisdom. Now, wisdom comes from God's word. So, thus, I want to know, and we've mentioned, this has been mentioned before, we want to know what it looks like if I pray to God for wisdom and I don't open his word. And I don't search for it in his word. Watch this. For illustration purposes, I'm going to call... Brother Elliot, because I want his wisdom on something. I want him to give me his wise advice on a certain situation. 
So I'm going to call them and I'm going to ask them, Elliot, what should I do about the situation? And then after I ask him about that situation, then I hang on the phone on him. Will I get his will I get the answer? No, I won't. Because I didn't listen to the wise advice that Brother Elliot would give me. In like manner, if I'm asking God for wisdom and then I'm not opening up his word to examine it so that he could give me that wisdom, which comes from his word, is as if I just hung up the phone up. So let us continue to keep the phone line open because wisdom is going to come from God's word. And this is how we want to ask. It says, but let him ask in faith with no doubt. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. We, we don't want to be like that. You want to ask in faith. And what you want to realize is that wisdom, watch this now, wisdom and faith are connected. Wisdom and faith are connected. So as you grow in faith, as you grow in trust in God, as you grow in being confident in God, as you grow in leaning on God, and you grow in trusting, leaning on, obeying, submitting to his word, your faith is going to grow. Now, how does your faith grow? We know that, Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you must ask in faith, no doubt. He who doubts it like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. Uh, sometimes in our lives, what's happened is life tosses us this way, and it tosses us that way, and it's tossing us forward, and it's tossing us backwards. What do we need? We, know we need more wisdom. We need our faith to increase in God's Word and by God's word. James 1 and 7 was still with wisdom. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. You want more stability in your life? Sure, you do. Yes, that's the right answer. Uh -huh. Grow in getting God's wisdom. Grow in faith, and you'll start seeing your life being more stable. And what we want to realize is that these four elements, they intertwine. These four elements, the more you grow in being balanced in those four areas, the more uh, abundant spiritually abundant your life will be and the point is we're growing in these four areas being balanced in these four areas balance in these four areas has to do with wellness it has to do with spiritual wellness okay when a person has a physical problem a physical illness it's because something is out of balance. So thus, when we're out of balance in each, any of these four areas, it's going to affect our spiritual lives. And the more you and I grow in these areas, the more we'll be able to contribute to others. The more we'll be able to contribute to our brothers and sisters in Christ, the more we'll be able to serve them. Again, we're looking at Jesus, and we're looking at the beginning of his life, and we're looking at the balance that he had in these four areas. This stature, stature is your body. And when we look at Matthew twenty two thirty nine, 39, it said, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And sometimes this goes over our head. In order for us to 
be able to contribute and help others, we have to take care of ourselves first. See, notice it says, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. What's the implication there? You've already taken care of yourself. God wants you to be physically healthy. So, yes, you can go out there and walk to people's doors and tell them about the gospel of Christ. Yes, he wants you to be healthy so that you could visit your brothers and sisters in Christ. So that you could... I have activities with them. Yes, God wants you to take care of your body. It's his temple. It belongs to him. Everything that we have belongs to God. Everything. So it's a matter of stewardship with our body. He wants us to sleep properly. Ouch, my feet are hurt now. He wants us to sleep, get enough sleep. He wants us to eat properly. And he wants us to do exercise. Another hour. Okay, God wants us to take care of ourselves so that we can take care of others, so that we can share the love of Christ with others, so that we can help each other to grow spiritually. Mm -hmm. And in favor with God. That's our most important relationship. It's our relationship with God. Matthew 22. In that verse number 37, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Love Him with all your strength. So you, you want to continually uh, think about God, meditate on God. You want to continue to pray to Him. You want to continue to uh, meditate upon Him, His goodness. His mercy, His grace, His love, His kindness. You want to continue to uh, thank Him. You want to continue to praise Him. You want to continue to honor and glorify His name. And you want to love Him with all your strength. Everything that you do. When we look at Jesus, His relationship with His Father was based upon His obedience. He was able to say... To the religious leaders of the day, he, the Father who sent me, is with me. The Father has not left me alone. Why? The four is a conclusion. Why? I always, not sometimes, I always do those things that please him. And when Jesus Christ made that statement, I have to say, glory be to God. I have to say thank you, Jesus. Because if he hadn't have did that, you and I would be lost forever. We wouldn't have a chance to be reconciled to God. God is so good to us. God is so good to us. God is good to us all the time. He's better to us than we are to ourselves. We know that. Glory be to God. Let us continue to praise Him. Let us continue to adore Him. Let us continue to lift Him up. God is so good. Jesus always did those things that pleased the Father. And in favor with men. This has to do with our relationships with one another. Jesus said in St. John chapter 13 and verse number 35, he said, by this all will know that you are my disciples, that you're, you're learning from me. That you're following me if you have love for one another. Let us continue to grow in loving one another. Let us continue to grow in, and notice Brother Jenkins said continue to grow because you're doing it. Let us continue to grow in our praying with one another. Let us continue to grow in sending our scriptures to one another. Let us continue to grow. In, in, in the world, you don't have to uh, go far to get mistreated. You, you, you don't have to go far. You don't have to go far for somebody to give you an unkind look. You don't have to go far. When we look at the church of Christ, it's 
the stop before we get to heaven. Glory be to God. Let us continue to encourage one another and, and strengthen one another. Let us continue to find out, look for what, what, are, what are my brothers and sisters in Christ doing good? Let us continue to grow and be in each other's cheerleaders. They're not out there in the world. Let us, con and this is an area where we want to grow in. We want to grow in being each other's best friends. We want to continue to grow in being each other's best friends. Yes, we've had relationships, and yes, we can continue the relationship with those who we call our friends outside of Christ, but your, your best friends are the church of Christ. Our best friends are not in the world. Amen. Yes, you've developed relationships because of uh, time and the time that you uh, spent with them. But they are not your best friends because they can't be your best friends. Because why? Because they can't lead you to Christ. They can't lead you to growth in Christ. Now, we're, we're not saying things negative about them, but they can't be your best friends. Your best friends are members of the Church of Christ. So now what Brother Jenkins needs to do is he needs to grow into the position that God has placed them in. Let us continue to love one another, have the relationships with one another as God would have us to have. And as you and I individually look in the mirror of the word of God, looking at Jesus and grow in those four areas, we'll, be more, we'll grow in spiritual wellness and we'll grow in being able to contribute to our brothers and sisters in Christ. We'll continue to grow in reaching out to the Lord's so that precious souls may become part of God's great spiritual family. Galatians 6, number 10. Now watch this. this. This is something that we want to see. And this is another thing that goes over Brother Jenkins' head. Okay. Brother Bible points this out. Galatians 6, verse number 10. It says, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, right? So we're to do good to all. So again, people in the world are dying outside of Christ mm -hmm. to have a destiny to be separated from God Now, Brother Jenkins needs to jump through some hoops so that he can share God's good news with as many people as possible so that doesn't happen to them. So I need to jump through some hoops. I need to uh, love them. I need to seek to encourage them. Y'all know how many hoops y'all jump through and try to get a person to come to Christ, obey the gospel? You teach them, uh, you, you take them to get something to eat, you help them with whatever they need help with, and we ought to do that. And God emphasizes that we ought to do that. Yet, watch what God says about our brothers and sisters in Christ. He says, let us do good to all. Then he says, especially. Especially. Especially to those who are of the household of faith. So whatever hoops I'm jumping through to get people to save, I need to jump through more hoops for my brothers and sisters. Glory be to God. Somebody. What's the start 
hearing about his life, death, burial, and resurrection, believing it, having to change our mind. That's what we're seeking to do is change our mind. Confess, yes, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, being baptized into Christ, then being faithful unto death. And Jesus has that promise. I'll give you a crown of life. As we stand.